Today is a momentous day at Reclaim Hosting because we are actually getting ready to launch or have launched, it's live on the website, Reclaim's instructional technology offering. And uh, it's kind of an exciting day. Lauren, can you tell us more about what it is? Why, yes, I can, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, I, I'm super excited. This is a big day for Reclaim um, in a lot of ways, actually. So I'm really excited to be doing this chat just to kind of record where we are in this moment of thinking and time. Um, I think for a long time now, coming up on 10 years, Reclaim has been really focused on the technology, supporting the infrastructure for educational institutions to be able to bring web hosting digital tools into the classroom. And that has been really awesome. And now as of today, we are launching the idea of instructional tech, which is to support the educators that are using this infrastructure. So in short, um, you know, I think instructional technology at Reclaim Hosting is simply professional development for instructional technologists. Uh, professional development and a sense of community. Those are the two big, I think, cornerstones of what we're trying to do here. So it's a, it's a subscription that our institutions can sign on to. And as a result, you get access to a ton of calendar events and also a really centralized community hub to talk about these events while they're happening, but then to also have a place to congregate went out without events too, you know, so in between the events. Um, and that has always been a challenge for Reclaim in the past is, you know, we'll have these community moments in our conferences or workshops, and we want to keep that buzz and that conversation going afterwards, but it's hard to capture it and to keep people in a space that they can come back to and rely on. And so, you know, we've been doing these workshops for a while now. We've had conferences every couple of years. Um, you know, and so we're good at those. It's the work that we're doing, but we wanted some structure there and, you know, events that people can rely on. So we have consistent workshops now for Domain of One's Own and WordPress multi-site and hopefully more to come as we build and have capacity for more. We'll also have very regular flex courses. So every month we're going to be tackling a different topic like Gravity Forms, Docker containers, Ghost, Discord, you know, you name it, OBS, streaming services, all of the above, and just tackling those each month. And that's also included in the professional development subscription. And then finally, and probably my favorite part, uh, is the com community component. Uh, which we are doing in Discord. And so when you sign on for the professional services, we're going to be doing an assessment with each school to get a sense of why they're here, what they're hoping to learn, what their goals are. Um, and then we'll be partnering them with like-minded schools. So putting libraries together in a similar cohort or schools that are, you know, geographically in a similar space or, you know, all kinds of goals like that. Um, and pulling them into Discord, we'll be having live chats, but also asynchronous conversations, hangout spaces, um, channels for different events, all of the above. So I'm really excited for those. And I'm also really excited for what's to come, the growth or the, the flexibility that we've built into this idea. So as we have capacity for more, we can always put more on the calendar, um, you know, but you will always know what's coming up to a year in advance, which is something we haven't been able to promise or do before at Reclaim. So I'm really excited that we can say to folks now, hey, mark your calendars and plan for these, uh, you know, next spring. The dates are already on the calendar and you can count on them. And that's not something we've been able to do. So uh, that's probably <laughs> more than you wanted for right in this very moment, but I'm super excited for what's to come. It was a quite good overview. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, well done. <laughs> and I think like one of the things hearing you say it and like reflecting on the process of getting to this is interesting for me because, you know, Reclaim Today is always about kind of us documenting the moment where we are, how we got here and maybe where we're going. And for me, it's unique and we can talk about adding pilot and 
tailored to the team and what that's imagined because that's been amazing. But even several years ago, when we first thought, like, could we do ed tech or instructional technology as part of what we do at Reclaim Hosting, like, it seemed impossible. We were knee deep in support. We didn't have the kind of capacity in terms of people, but also we were thinking about it like we would do dedicated work with faculty to kind of offload from instructional technology groups. So we would kind of stand in as an ed instructional technologist. And I think that was the wrong approach. And it's not until we all kind of started kicking around the idea. And in fact, with the hire of Taylor, we really kind of kicked this into high gear because Taylor, in your interview, which is more like a chat, you were like, I really think there's a place for us imagining a way to support folks on the ground at various institutions who are doing the actual ed tech. And in some ways, that was a real shift for us imagining what it is we could do. And I think a lot of that was built on the platform of what we had done as part of the conference for the OER conference, which was called OER by Domains 21. And then we kind of parlayed that into a virtual conference. But that platform, in many ways, is the basis of kind of what we're planning and how we're rolling out instructional technology. And we're still using the TV and we're still playing with the idea of community broadcasting. But the idea now is to really bring that community together and kind of harness it for educational technologists to share and communicate with each other. So for me, it's an interesting road to have gotten here. It wasn't the way I thought it would materialize, but only being in conversation with all of you did it kind of come to be in that way. And that's the beautiful thing about any of this. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it as well. Um, it, as you kind of mentioned, when I um, started at, at Reclaim, this was something that I uh, kind of immediately started asking about and talking about because I, I felt like there is a niche that is sort of being unfilled broadly right now. Um, I participated in the OER by domains conference and that was my first domains conference. I wasn't able to make it to 19 and I didn't, I didn't even know about domains at the, at the domain 17. Um, but um, I remember coming out of participating in that conference, which uh, you know, you all organize and happen primarily over uh, discord and with recorded conversations. And I remember coming out of that conference being like, this is a type of professional development that I'm looking for as a person working in ed tech that I'm not finding a lot of other places. Um, there, there's um, some good resources and, and, uh, and you know, courses and programs and, and stuff like that for folks who are um, more on the, the design side of, of ed tech. And there, there are, a ton of things that are sort of general IT, like trainings and stuff like that. That's a huge, obviously, like industry on its own is that type of training. But there's not a lot for folks that are trying to bridge that gap and piece those things together. I think there's that. And to me, that's the work that's interesting. Obviously, yeah. I think that that's this is what I do. Uh, but um, but I, I don't know that there's a lot filling that sort of technical meets you know, working with faculty on the ground, working with students. And um, I, I think there's a lot of stuff that that there's a, a large gap there that that we could potentially help fill. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that this speaks to others. Uh, obviously, we're all hoping that this speaks to to other the other folks, too, um, and that they they might feel similarly that this could be something beneficial to them. Um, and, 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 you know, as well as the courses and, and, um, and things and workshops that we're hoping to offer, I really am particularly excited, as, as Lauren mentioned, about the Discord community. Just, I really, hopefully, I'm, I'm really hoping that this can be a place where people can kind of share more frequently and openly what they're working on. I, I'm hoping that it's by making it a little bit less formal that we can really encourage people to just talk about what they're working on because I, I find that fascinating. And I, sorry, go ahead, Pilot. No, no, no. You, you go. Okay. Well, one of the only, it was just a comment that I wanted to make, uh, Taylor, about what you were saying, just with regardless of what background you have or the types of experiences you're coming to the table with, I think this could be valuable for all. You know, I see this as something that branches just 
beyond reclaim hosting services. So yes, there would be training for domain of one's own or WordPress multi-site because that's what a lot of our institutions are using. But I could see this being helpful for you know, outside of those services, even if you don't have that, you know, I want to come and I want to learn about gravity forms or something, you know, you don't have to have domains to learn about gravity forms. And so being able to come to the to the discord conversations or to these flex courses, um, you know, just with whatever background you have, I think it's going to be really fun. And I'm excited for that part too, because I definitely don't have, you know, a super IT background, but I, I'm also, you know, not starting out either. So I, I'm somewhere in the middle and it's hard to find training for that type of person sometimes. Um, so I think this will be valuable for that, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how directly, well, I'm not really sure I don't know where that was, sentence was going, but the idea of what you're saying, Lauren, where you don't have to have WordPress multi-site domain of one's own uh, to not all of the trainings, they'll be centered on other things in addition, like Gravity Forms. You mentioned uh, Ghost and Peertube and Jitsi when we were starting this off um, is I think really useful. And I remember uh, we've had a couple of times in the community chats or on Twitter, people have said, hey, so, you know, this has been really great, but if we could maybe do something on this, which is not quite domain of one's own, but it's related, or, you know, I'm getting started with uh, Reclaim Cloud and I don't really know, or I know what I want to do, but I don't know how I'd even start doing it, or Gravity Form seems like a really cool tool that I'm very intimidated by. And the idea of this lets us listen to what people are saying and, and not just i'm okay there's sirens in the background not just uh I'm, hold on i'll do it while that's going <laughs> thanks jim i think everything's <laughs> fine now but uh the idea of um the idea of being able to say yes you have this and we want to support you consistently and throughout uh, domain of one's own WordPress multi-site. We want to help you administer this and grow your skills and learn more. And even beyond that, if there's other stuff that you don't know that you don't know, or that you have had on your back burner for a long time and say, Hey, I'd, I'd love to check that out. This lets us listen to that and develop a way to have people talking about that and learning from each other. It's back. Somebody else gets to talk it's, now. Well, it's interesting. I mean, based on what you said and both Taylor and Lauren, like one of the things that it's ed tech falls between like situations, whether it's IT or whether it's pedagogy, right? Like it's not always clearly defined. And in that regard, there's not a lot of professional organizations that support it in the US and Canada. And there are some, but like it kind of falls between the wayside. And I always like that about alt is Alt did a good job of supporting instructional technologists in the UK. And so this kind of presents, you know, a possibility for educational technologists to kind of do that, but also this kind of like focused community endeavor on a monthly basis to dive into something and to learn it as you can, like whether it's containers, which has been very interesting in terms of just infrastructure or gravity forms or WordPress multi-site management, but not just thinking about, okay, here's the plugins and themes, but what are you trying to do? Like, what is the kind of program? Because as an educational technologist, you're not just a technologist, right? You're also trying to understand pedagogy. You're also having to do a lot of project management, right? Like there's a lot of different skills that come to this. And a lot of people come to educational technology from different fields, which is what I love about the field is, you can meet any one person and they have a completely different background with the literature, science, right? Social sciences. Most it's yeah. it, like, it's, it's, it would, it's very, it's like rare for someone to be like, yes, I studied. I'm not, you can, and people do, but like most people don't come in this with like an undergrad in like a directly, you know, related thing. Uh, that's just not often the case. In fact, I wasn't muted. In fact, I actually think that's one of the joys of ed tech, but it's also why it gets kind of missed, right? Because it is very much a hybrid role, 
even just in your professional knowledge, not to mention dealing with virtual um, spaces. So it's super exciting to think that we could help our community directly, but even possibly beyond our immediate community, think through possibilities with educational technology. It's a new like endeavor for us. I think we are branching out and with that means bringing people on and trying to support it. And uh, for me, it's a dream come true because instructional technology has been my home and the kind of work I've done since you know 2004. It's, it's, it's I what mean, I know. I will say though, Jim, you know, in some ways it's new because it's, you know, it's got a new page on our site and it's a new offering and that, you know, we're making it formal and it's something that people can sign up for and the discord's new and that stuff. But in a lot of ways, this is work that we've already been doing. We just have structure behind it now. You know, we've been doing the workshops. We've, you know, I think people come to us and always congratulate our support services because they're they're not just oh we reset your password and be gone now you know it's let's talk about your workflow here how are you logging in you know this is the your best practice here's what you should consider going forward you know we're teachers first and i think now we have structure to do even more of that. And I'm really excited for that. Also, you know, if I put on my sales or account management hat on for a second, um, you know, because I've been in that space at Reclaim for a couple of years. And when we onboard a new school into Domain of One Zone or WordPress multi-site, you know, a lot of it is saying, okay, here's your keys to the kingdom. Here's the infrastructure go forth, you know? And I think we have tried to build out support documentation. We do a couple of trainings for Domain of One's Own in particular. And then of course we were getting into a routine of uh, workshops before everything went virtual for COVID. But, you know, now being able to say, you know, not only are you gonna get that onboarding workshop or that onboarding training, but look at all of this and you know, that we can now do for you. So that's where I have a lot of personal excitement because it, you know, we've been hearing this feedback for years now, you know, people are looking for more ways to engage with the community, more ways to get training about these tools and just beyond the basics, right? you know, you know how the tech works now, what, like how, what are people doing with it? How are, you know, what's the potential of where this could go? And those types of conversations will now have a home and a place at Reclaim. So I really like that. I'll tell you, one of the things that it makes me think of is, you know, Reclaim hosting is ed tech by ed techs, right? Like the company itself was derived and built by an ed tech group at UMW that then resonated with other texts all over the country and beyond. And I think that is for me, the dream of, of the Reclaim Ed Tech space is that one of the things that I was very proud of with the work at UMW is Ed Techs kind of took it into their own hands to build the reality they wanted with a variety of tools on campus. And I think that comes out of a community supporting and sharing what's possible. And I think we're trying to intentionally build that. And the reason why it's hard to build a part is because it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of organization, it takes money to put people in that situation to support. And it's cool that Reclaim Hosting is in a situation now to do that. And like do it, but do it right. Because I think we have proven that like we can not only support the people, but we can now build these kind of loosely joined, small, kind of, I think, groovy environments where people can do this work. And that's what's so exciting because we're actually doing the ed tech work that we're kind of inviting other people to commune around. That's going to build the thing that we're sharing with. Like there is a certain amount of like meta to the whole process. Like we'll talk about peer tube, I'm sure extensively and Jitsi and all the other things we'll be doing discord, but like there is a there there to what we're talking about. It's not an empty thing. It's real. Totally. I, I think one of my favorite things I'm hoping to get feedback on as we move with this is sort of the offering itself and the tools used for the offering itself and these delivery methods that like, cause that, that's the, that's the ed tech stuff, right? Or the, to me, that's the core of it is like, what are you using to do what? Those two questions hitting each other, right? And saying like, like we're, we've talked about a little bit already, like, Hey, there, we're going to have a discord community. And Discord is an invention, a very intentional choice. Like 
uh, we, we talked uh, about like, we want something like this. Should we be using Discord? Should we be using Mattermost and hosting it ourselves, or or some other tool? And you know, we went with Discord for specific reasons around like, oh, well, we can make you know uh, nuanced spaces inside of it, and we can use that so that people can sort of have uh, access to certain areas in Discord, and we can we can organize it in a way that we were really excited about, and we can link Discord with some of these other tools that we're going to introduce. And so that was a very intentional choice, but I would absolutely want to hear from folks as we go along about like, well, what's working here and what isn't like, what should we change? Because that's, I think how this, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that that meta aspect becomes a value add, right. And in conversation around that, because this is in some ways going to be directly applicable, right? Like if you're, I mean, I, I, in, in previous roles, I had, um, I supported faculty who use Discord for teaching, right? So um, that, and there's a million examples like that. So I, w- I would love to hear from other people who know more about this than I do or that we do as a team and can lend some of that expertise as well, because I, I think that's the point, right? It's we're learning from all, all from each other. Totally. And I think that's, you know, where the flexibility of something like this is really great because we're able to say, okay, at bare minimum, here's what's coming on the calendar. However, you know, I could imagine we get some schools in Discord where we really start talking about, you know, what people need, what's relevant, what are people, you know, being faced with or challenged with right now. Okay, let's add that, you know, and maybe there's a couple key players in the community that want to take that and run with it. And then suddenly, you know, there is more content that's just coming out and that's being helpful for folks that, you know, is just a a benefit of being in the community and not necessarily something that Reclaim Hosting is running or owning. And I think that's also another point too, is that with this, it's no longer just the Reclaim Hosting team that is delivering the professional development opportunities. We're working with folks like Tom Woodward, for example, to help us run some of these workshops. And I think that's going to be a goal in the coming months too, is to get more uh, experts and specialists in certain fields and, you know, topics to really um, speak on some of these, you know, in some of these categories. So I'm excited for that too. I'm also excited to kind of see, as we mentioned, some of these things will be sort of on the periphery of what we currently support and do um, at Reclaim. And I'm, I'm excited because in my experience, anything like that, when you say, Hey, I'm exploring this tool or this technology, and it's only kind of related that only ever is true for a very short amount of time. Typically you you wrap that in and it's like, Oh, I actually need this now. Um, And so some of the things that, we've already talked about like gravity forms, obviously like gravity forms runs on WordPress. So that's, you know, uh, not specifically domain of one's own, but certainly can be used there. Um, we have, um, uh, plans for talking about, uh, doing a course on Docker and getting comfortable with that. And again, okay, Docker you can run Docker and reclaim cloud, but even if you're not going to run it in reclaim cloud, I think you would get a lot out of what we're uh, building right now and hoping to, the questions we're hoping to answer with that series um, and, uh, OBS, I think is another good example, right? So using a tool to do live, uh, mixing a video and, and make the video that you create, even if it's amateur, uh, level video, making it as engaging as possible with the lowest effort as possible is kind of how I like to think about it, but there are other directions. You can go super fancy with some of this stuff talking about some of that. And I think that's also a pretty good example of, I don't think there's a, a, a large place to go to find out things about like, how do I produce video for education at a low to zero cost or additional cost, but make it look good. Make it not look like I just hit record on my, you know, quick time on my Mac in, you know, my basement. <laughs> and it, can it, there's, there's a lot of people looking for one step above that, but not a lot of resources directed at people that are teaching looking for that information or supporting teachers. Um, So most of the things jump from there to, okay, well, you can bring a crew in and rent all the equipment and it'll be 10 grand, you know, (laughs) what about the between? 
I thought you um, said low additional cost, Taylor. You well, know, that's what I'm saying is there's yeah. there's not stuff between, right? Or yeah. not a lot between right now. So hoping to meet some of those. I'm hoping to discover some of those needs. You know, I I, I really am interested to see uh, ed techs bring things to the community and say, this is the thing I'm working on. I don't know if anyone else has encountered this. For sharing, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, we see that a lot. I, I can't tell you how many times I get the question, what are some plugins that I should be looking at for WordPress multi-site or what are, what themes are people using these days, best practices for that kind of stuff. And I think just having a place to record some of that, that's available and helpful, you know? Um, it, it's true. And like part of what's interesting to me too, is like just some like, I know when I started as an educational technologist coming from a literature background, like there are certain things I just didn't understand, like RSS, it's magic. How does it work? Right? Like XML, like, like I had to kind of come up to speed as a technologist. And I know a lot of people coming into ed tech are in that situation. Like what is headless WordPress? Like how to JavaScript, HTML and CSS integrate. Like I like the idea that these be places where people come like brown bag launches to understand a concept and then maybe take that to the next level to try and play with it and building around it. And like the conceptual learning in ed tech is pretty vast because technology has moved so fast. And so like working with people to augment what we understand quickly, that's why communities are so valuable. That's why I think this whole offering reclaim instructional technology or reclaim at tech came together as we sat intentionally every week for about an hour or two thinking it through and talking about it and like i don't think that's any different with any of the professional development we do like you set aside the time you work with cool people to think through what's possible and things emerge and i think like that's kind of what we're hoping to do for our day job Right. Like, that's my dream. Well, yeah. It's just take the value of the workshops and the conferences and the things that we do once a year, or once every two years and make it OK. We're going to capture that and make it an ongoing thing that we can go back to week after week or month after month to just hold ourselves accountable and lean on a community that might know more than us. You know, so I, I I'm really excited for that. And I, I know that's my, been my phrase this whole podcast, but it's, you know, it's a lot of excitement. It's, I think, a milestone for Reclaim, but I'm really excited for it to start to take shape. 